Hello, everyone. Uh, how's everyone doing? Uh, it's a really big crowd today. <laughs> Not really used to that. Um, thanks for being here. I'm going to talk about uh, accessibility meets style, uh, design revolution. Um, who am I? I am Mitchell. I am a digital designer at Level Level. Uh, but I'd like to talk a little bit about my history first. I think um, back in the days, the earliest, as far as I can remember, I've always been a creative, uh, a creative person. Um, my earliest memories uh, include drawing with a pencil, uh, painting, um, making art projects at school, name it, everything. Um, and I think a lot of you people as a child, we're kind of the same like me, because who didn't love to draw as a kid? Um, now, the older you become, most of the people uh, lose that interest. But to me, it never really did. Actually, my love for art only grew stronger as I got older. I kept drawing, I made beautiful uh, portraits of people, um, and I loved art to look at art, architecture, you name it, all around me. Um, but as time flies by, I was drawn to digital art and digital design. Um, technology advanced, there arose new opportunities, and my old traditional skills actually got lost because I did everything on a laptop or the computer. Uh, but people still tried to see me as, a, uh, as an artist. And I often got the question, oh, you're an artist, right? Can you draw me like one of the French girls? <laughs> um, OK, sure. Only to come up and let them down with something like this. <laughs> OK, anyway, um, years later, now I uh, uh, find myself as a, I call myself a digital designer. Uh, you could also call me a UX designer, experience designer, uh, interaction designer, visual designer, web designer. It depends on who's asking. But uh, uh, the most important thing is I try to uh, create my uh, designs with a mindset of an artist. Um, I like to make designs that are functional, uh, user-friendly, accessible, but also aesthetically pleasing and visually compelling. To me, it's not enough to make something that simply works. I really try to make it a piece of art. But now I hear people say, <laughs> a web designer is not an artist. A designer is a problem solver, a maniac. I think people know uh, who they are. Of course, that's true. But why can't we be both? Be the problem solver and be an artist and combine those two skills to come up with the best and most beautiful creations. I had a lot of animations, but it's not really working. That's OK. Um, but wait a minute. If we look at the uh, problem solver and the artist, and I was talking about the professions a little bit before, we could see the problem solver as a user experience designer and the artist as a user interface designer. The user experience is about the uh, experience, and user interface is about uh, making something a little bit more pretty. So if you combine those conf uh, professions, you've got the user experience, user interface designer, someone who can do both. We should use the skills of both to come up with the best and beautiful uh, designs. So we should solve the problem first, make it accessible and user-friendly, uh, and then make it visually appealing. So go ahead and throw, on, throw, throw all those artsy designs, uh, visuals on your designs. Problem solved, right? Well, not really, because more and more websites need to be accessible, or even by law, it's becoming the standard. Um, but a lot of people still have a very black and white stance about um, accessible design and especially as accessible websites. Accessibility and aesthetics are often seen as conflicting goals. Uh, you can't have them both. 
So accessibility is the more important one, and uh, they go with that one, and aesthetics really gets neglected. Some people say the more accessible an interface is, the uglier it becomes. And that kind of hurts my feelings. But that's why I'm here today, to show you that um, accessible sites can be beautiful and creative on top of being user-friendly. There's no need to sacrifice aesthetics um, to create beautiful websites. So, um, aesthetics and accessibility should go hand in hand and not fight together to create a best combination. You just have to find the right balance between the two. Now, if we're talking about the balance, I created a very beautiful scale, <laughs> which I'm really proud of. Not. <laughs> Um, let's try to talk about aesthetics first. So let's pull down the uh, scale to uh, down and weigh down the aesthetics. What are aesthetics anyway? And why is it important? It's really about the visual attractiveness of a product. Um, it's a visual or sensory qualities of a design that are intended to evoke an emotional or a psychological uh, response to the viewer. You know, that feeling you get when you look at a piece of art or an architecture or a website that's, that's saying, like, it, I, I really like this, or a piece of clothing or whatever, that it really fits my feelings. That's what we're talking about. And in web design, it's more about look and feel. Uh, so it's about using different colors, uh, spacing, use of images, uh, typography, and different design elements. So, what makes a website or something beautiful or visually appealing to you guys? Could it be um, bright colors, or the use of uh, dark mode, lots of white space, lots of spacing, uh, bold and daring, warm and calming? There are a lot of different things. Um, not everyone is the same. That's really interesting, because everyone have a, has a different perspective uh, and preferences. And that's really influenced by our uh, background, our cultural background, and our so uh, social backgrounds, as well as our, our personal experiences. Because what I find pretty doesn't mean you have to find it pretty as well. It's my personal taste, that feeling that I was talking about. But there's also something called uh, generalized aesthetics. And to make it a little bit more simple, you could think of it about uh, in trends, as in fashion, uh, architecture, design. Um, so I got some examples for that. In uh, the art, it's like uh, expressionism. And this was actually my phase when I heard I could give a talk at WordCamp Europe <laughs> on the main stage. <laughs> Oh, oh my God. <laughs> um, and you got uh, the Renaissance artwork, mostly my uh, process when designing something, all those faces. Um, in uh, architecture, you got like art deco, uh, beautiful shapes, uh, brutalism, uh, really robust and bold uh, buildings, but also in fashion um, with like the 70s with a lot of pastel colors and really daring polka dots. Uh, anyway, um, the trends come and go, uh, but common elements are often liked and pursued. I like that, me too. Let's wait a little bit. Such a trendsetter. But that's also in web design. Uh, we got like uh, examples for minimalism with a lot of white space, a lot of spacing, uh, mostly pure white and um, a few images. Neomorphism, not really sure how to pronounce this, but I hope I'm right. This is actually not a really good example for uh, accessible design because is it a button what I'm seeing? Is it what kind of contrasts are here? Is it selected or not? Um, also, brutalism in web design. 
uh, a really daring against the mainstream, against the rules. Also not really accessible, but I like it. And who doesn't remember the pretty little bookcase, the realistic bookcase from Apple with the scale morphism? That was like a, a trend to make things uh, realistic. Last example is dark mode, um, which is actually a good one because it's accessible as well. It uh, reduces your eye strains when you're reading something like a long read. And it's good for the environment because it uses less uh, energy. So you can really get that feeling that there, that are different uh, kind of um, feelings with aesthetics that people can get. But aesthetics are more than just superficial uh, decoration and making things pretty. They can serve a critical and crucial function because a well-designed website can really help establish creativity with your visitors, making them more likely to trust your brand, differentiate you from your brand, from differentiate your brand from competitors, create a positive perception, and uh, really communicate your identity. But most importantly, it really makes the visitor want to interact with the website, explore it, and of course, hopefully, make a conversion. Early impressions matter. Uh, the visitors from, uh, form initial impressions within seconds. I think if you walk around here at the sponsor booth, booths, you could um, see attractive booths and you're really attracted to go to those uh, booths. So this is also something with aesthetics. They could really play a key role in shaping your uh, impression. If the impression doesn't stick, you could lose your visitors. And if a website looks unprofessional or outdated, visitors may assume that the business is not trustworthy or that the products or services are of poor quality. But instead, if a website looks sleek, modern, and visually pleasing, uh, appealing, visitors are more likely to view the business as professional, credible, and trustworthy. So I've uh, rattled on and on about aesthetics. I guess you can really see that I like this and I think this is really important. But let's go back to the balance and the scale of um, accessibility versus um, aesthetics. And we really pull down the accessibility one. Oh, that was a... Uh, accessibility is really heavy. <laughs> um, accessibility. That's really about making sure that everyone, including people with disabilities, you can use a website or app. I think a lot of you people know uh, what accessibility is about. Uh, this could mean things like uh, easy to read texts, good clickable buttons, enough contrast between colors, images that should have alternative text so screen readers could read them, um, and when I first heard about accessibility, I was quite skeptic about it because I really thought, um, doesn't this limit my creativity or and prevent it from creating stunning websites uh, that would stand out from the rest? And um, so <laughs> goodbye creativity, make boring websites, yay. <laughs> And I wasn't alone. Uh, there are a lot of people that still think this way. Uh, it's a question I get asked a lot, actually, even from businesses, from how can you create stunning websites but still follow the accessibility rules and be still creative. But it's actually quite the opposite because once you start working with it, it could actually be really fun and challenging um, it doesn't have to block your creativity. Um, it can really thrive your designs and it opens up really new possibilities. It can expand your creative tool set, your, your brains. So you could approach designs in a more innovative and uh, creative way. Uh, you're really forced to think deeply about the user experience 
um, to uh, innovative, to create innovative and creative user-friendly designs, which would lead to new designs, design elements and techniques which you actually never even considered before. A few examples. Um, for my architects, we used high color contrast colors, uh, larger font sizes, which could really improve uh, readability. Uh, and it still is bold and modern and gives the architectural vibe, um, which perfectly matches with my artist artistic views. Um, you can really think outside the box. Uh, it encourages you to think outside the box to find new ways to solve problems. Uh, for example, you shouldn't really rely on color alone. Uh, for, I hope you could see this. For Almere, it's like a, a website that uh, sells plots. We used uh, a legenda with uh, statuses of those plots, if it's sold or if it's available or if it's uh, soon available or if it's uh, reserved already. So we used colors, uh, icons and uh, text to show the status of those uh, plots. Um, you should really uh, optimize your website's navigation, uh, making important information easy to find, which will uh, improve uh, usability and functionality. Um, and alternative text for images makes your websites want, uh, uh, more accessible and it really imposes uh, uh, SEO. And I mean, who doesn't want that? Uh, these are just a few examples of what you can do, but most importantly, it's just the right thing to do. Everyone should have equal access to uh, information and services online. And by designing with accessibility in mind, we can really achieve this. So now what? We talked about aesthetics, we talked about accessibility. How do we make a website that's good looking and uh, how can we ensure that it's accessible for everyone? Let's go back to the balance. Uh, we changed the uh, nails to, uh, to a frame. <laughs> we need to make sure to find a good balance between these two and um, have them complement each other and not conflict with each other. I like you, I like you too. Uh, but let's make it simple. We could also see accessibility and aesthetics as something different. Accessibility could also be the functional elements of your website and aesthetics could also be the decorative uh, elements of your website. Now, what are functional elements? Elements that are essentials to the functionality of the interface, which must be fully accessible to all users. These, it's like the core of your website, this just has to work. Um, these elements could include uh, colors, accessible of course, uh, typography and the right uh, use of headings, the heading structure. Um, Good clickable buttons, also contrasting buttons, and to me it's important to show the hover states as well. Uh, perfect input fields for, for forms, even with labels, that's really important. And easy to use uh, navigations. These are just a few examples which just have to work. If a button isn't easy to click or a form isn't easy to fill out, users will get frustrated and may leave your website. Which could be a job for a problem solver. This, this is really the essence of functional elements. So what are decorative elements? Um, these are elements that are purely aesthetic in nature and do not have serve a specific function within the interface. It's important for your identity and recognition, but your site can work without it. A few examples, uh, background images and elements. For Nature Today, we used um, those cute swirls and um, colorful blobs. Uh, for a podcast platform, Listen, we used the, the, the audio elements to get the feeling that you really can listen to something. 
And even the WordCamp um, Athens website right now uses a lot of those visual elements that I'm talking about. Uh, icons could really help. Um, uh, for example, these are some tasks that you could use and people could really see oh, this is a, a task I could do. Um, also here, these just add like a visual cue from you can do something like this. But also animations. Uh, for uh, Amsterdam Sinfonietta, we created um, um, a really slow, slow animation on the background and some com uh, content elements that slowly appear when you uh, scroll through the website, which perfectly fits their uh, branding. But animations is a difficult one. Uh, slow anim moving animations can be used as long as they are not the primary way of conveying in important information and do not interfere with the user's ability to navigate the website. We can provide users with the ability to turn off those animations uh, or just adjust the speed, or we could use the uh, reduce motion function. Don't you know how? It's better to create still elements uh, to get the same effect, or uh, you could ask a developer for help. Uh, decorative elements add really uh, visual interests, but are not essential to your website and can be removed or uh, simplified without impacting the user experience. We can have more flexibility to make those elements accessible and experiment with different styles and techniques without worrying uh, about compromising the accessibility. These styles may not uh, meet the WCAG guidelines, but we could still find a way to seamlessly integrate uh, aesthetics with functionality. So again, aesthetics and functionality should work harmoniously together instead of clashing uh, with each other. Um, let's put it all together with all the things I've said and quickly build a, a website from scratch. This is Pip, a creative photographer. Uh, he loves colors, but he's also a little bit mysterious and he asks us to create him a portfolio. He gave us some elements like a logo, colors, images, uh, a typography that he loves. And we uh, started with uh, a simple navigation, easy to find things like uh, a good title, a subtitle, uh, maybe a search bar so people could really see his portfolio, uh, or search for his portfolio items, add a few blocks of uh, portfolio items, add some images. This actually could be it, but we want to make it a, bit, a little bit more visual appealing. So uh, the text will go over the uh, images, add a background with it to make it accessible, uh, change the font type. You could really see a different kind of vibe already. already. Um, now we can add more style elements uh, that he was talking about with the colorful, colorfulness, but this is a little bit too bold for Pip. So let's tone it a little bit down and change the font because he really didn't like the font anywhere, anymore. Um, this almost feels perfect. It just doesn't really give that mysterious vibe that he was going for. So let's make it dark. Let's switch. Um, this really gets the mood going. Uh, last but not least, we could also add some uh, animations. I hope this one will start. I hope you guys could see it. It's a little bit dark, <laughs> but there are some elements that are slowly moving and um, um, the use of hover animations is, uh, gives a really different dynamic and uh, not that static feeling. I think this video is... Stop. No. Okay. And this really fits his identity and feeling he was going for. Mm. Hmm. Yeah. This was just a super fast uh, example of a website, and we could do so much more, even with uh, WordPress templates or themes. Um, so let's conclude. Uh, accessibility really is important. It should be the default. 
uh, but we really can't neglect all, uh, aesthetics altogether. <laughs> we can go full accessibility mode and copy and paste popular designs or themes that work, uh, and it will be way easier from the design perspective, uh, which is okay, of course, but it could be a disaster for your business. Uh, you don't really have an identity or personality to convey that identity to your uh, users, to beat your competition, of course. You will be just one of those in a million. Um, I think maybe you all saw images and websites like this, which is okay, of course, again, but is that really what you want? Um, so it's really time to put a renewed focus on creating websites that are both, both functional and visually stunning by preserving and finding a balance between accessibility and aesthetics we can really rev revolutionize uh, design and create exceptional websites that truly stand out sparkles fire this takes too long <laughs> and that's really a win-win for everyone um, and that's quite enough my wrap up. Thank you so much for uh, listening. <laughs> Thanks, Mitchell. That was a really great reminder of how limitations spark creativity rather than like limiting them. So I thought it was a really wonderful talk. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so we've got about 10 minutes for questions. If anybody's got a question, if you go up to one of the, the mics uh, and we'll fit in as many as we can. That's okay. I have a question. Yeah, sure. So I'm interested, um, do you still feel that you have to convince businesses of the um, benefits of accessibility? Or is that something, you know, with level levels of reputation, do they come to you for accessible websites? Or do you, are you trying to um, convince them of it? Um, at level level, you mean? Yeah. We don't really have to convince uh, the businesses anymore because we are known for accessible mm -hmm. websites. Um, Yes. What advice would you have for us at other businesses who are, who are trying to make the case to our clients that they should... Uh, uh, well, you should accessible? really focus on the mindset of the business. Of course, business is king. Uh, the business uh, owner is king, but um, you should really teach them that it's really important to make an accessible website as well. Mm -hmm. um, and it's even good for business because if you are one of the few who have a, uh, an accessible website, you could get so many more visitors, even people with disabilities. Um, I think that's one of the tips I could give. Great. Thanks. Any more questions? Have we got one here? Yes, yes. Um, you have a lot of uh, ready-made tools that you can install on the website that uh, have accessibility uh, functions. So how do you think about that? And is that not the solution for us who don't want to do accessibility? Um, it could be like plugins, you mean? Or yeah, plugins, yeah. There are a lot of uh, accessible plugins. Um, mm. You could use them, especially if you uh, use WordPress templates. But you could also start with uh, a, a blank accessible theme and then add the visual elements uh, later on if you need those. Yeah, but you also have the external services eh, that you can just plug into a website and then suddenly they have some accessibility um, then I should maybe this question should be given to one of my colleagues because <laughs> I'm not really a developer or a plugin user is that okay yeah sure okay, okay. thank you Great, thank thanks. you <laughs> any more questions if there are any questions that you're maybe afraid to ask on the microphone you could always just uh, tap me on the shoulder and ask them all right, thank you so much for your talk, Mitchell. Thank you. <laughs>